Yo, what's good, y'all? We back once again with another video. We're going to be covering what happened in the trade deadline yesterday because it was some major moves that went down. It's pretty interesting to say the least. You know, there was major moves, there was minor moves, trade rumors left and right. So let's kick it off with the first major move of the trade deadline, and that was Portland continuing to move on from their veteran players, trading Stargar CJ McCollum along with Larry Nance Jr. and Tony Snow to the New Orleans Pelicans for Josh Hart and Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Tomas Sadoransky, along with a protected first-round pick as well. If I had to give my opinion, though, on this move, from the Portland side of things, I'd probably say it was an okay trade. I do like Josh Hart, and I do like Alexander-Walker as young assets. I feel like they probably could have got a little bit of more, a little bit more for CJ McCollum. But there was the rumor going around before they moved him that, you know, this was going to be the type of package they were going to get for CJ McCollum considering the contract and the injuries that had been happening to him and the age. So I get it. So I'd probably say it was an okay move on the Portland side of things. Now on the New Orleans side of things, I actually do like the move. I think it's a major playoff push move. You do got, you got Ingram, you got CJ McCollum now joining him to form that duo. And they're going to potentially hold it down until they add their first option, Zion Williamson, to form that big three. And I do like the trio. I like the trio if it goes down later on in the season and they have them all. I do like that trio. The Pelicans are currently 10th in the Western Conference, which is the final play-in spot. And it's now or never to prove to Zion that the franchise is trying their best to win. Rookie year for Zion, it was a disappointment. Didn't play a lot. Didn't make the playoffs. Second season, which was last year, disappointing year for them. And in this season, they've been, you know, they're about 10 games below 500. They're in that playing spot. But it's really because it's weaker Western Conference than usual. And also, Zion is still out. He hasn't played a game all season. So that's still kind of a disappointment considering, you know, the talent that they have when healthy. But if you look at their team on paper, you look at their starting five, I do think that they got better. Devontae Graham. CJ McCollum, Ingram, Zion when he comes back and he's healthy. And Jonas Valanciunas is a pretty solid starting five on paper, I would say. I'd probably pick them to make the last playing spot if I had to bet. Unless injuries plague Zion for the whole year. Or McCollum and Ingram end up getting hurt. But overall, I'd say it's an okay move for Portland. They're still trying to move into that rebuild direction. So I, I like it for that aspect. Now, for the Pelicans, I would say it was a good move because they're trying to make that playoff push and they kind of have to. Not saying that they should, but they kind of have to just because of the circumstances that can come with not making the postseason this year and how it can affect the future of the franchise. So I like the move. Now, let's swing our way to another Western Conference team trying to make a playoff push. And that team is none other than the Sacramento Kings will easily take home the biggest wow factor move of the day by trading potential young star guard from last year's draft class, Tyrese Halliburton, for Pacers all-star DeMontis Sabonis, which is something I think no one saw coming at all. It's kind of weird, because we pretty much all were expecting that if the Kings were going to move on from one of their young guards, it was probably going to be De'Aaron Fox. But instead, instead, they trade Halliburton, and you know what? At first glance, it seems pretty stupid. Or it seems extremely stupid. I was one of those guys. I was on Twitter saying it was a stupid, like, extremely stupid move. But I'm going to just say this. Because I still think it's kind of stupid. It's, I'm not going to say, like, how it was on Twitter. But I still think it's kind of dumb. But let me just say this. If you're a Kings fan, you better pray that Sabonis and Fox is good enough to catapult them into the playoffs. Because if they miss it again, and then Halliburton goes on to Indiana and makes that leap... In the second half of the season the kings are just gonna end up looking really really stupid like they have for the past decade and you know what it's pretty stupid it was pretty dumb trade right now i'm not gonna lie to you now on the basketball side of things for this move indiana now has their point guard of the future they're in full rebuild mode halliburton in his last 24 games is averaging 17 and 9 on efficient shooting let's not forget he can also defend as well he's six foot five long wingspan Got a little bit of a weird jump shot, but like I said, efficient three-point shooter. So the potential for a star guard is right there. 
Now as for the Kings side of things, they're officially in playoff push mode. They're kind of in a similar spot as the Pelicans, but this time I feel like they're kind of doing it to save face when it comes to like the fans and the media. Because the Kings have been catching heat for just being complete garbage ever since Chris Webber ended up leaving Sacramento. It's been that type of way. It's been that way the whole time. And now this is their chance, I guess, to try to make a playoff push. And I guess Sabonis is the answer. I'm assuming that's what they thought going into this. So now with Fox and Sabonis as the duo, they now have to try to make a playoff push. And there's no, you know, there's nothing else they can do. They cannot fail on trying to make the play in because if they don't, if they don't make the play in, they're just going to look really dumb for making this move. Another thing I question too is the fit because between the two, you know, Fox and Sabonis, it's a little weird on paper because Fox can't shoot. He's having an off year. You got Sabonis, who's not known for being a big time floor spacer either. They both succeed around the basket. They're both left handed, so they tend to go to that side. So I just don't really see the fit. I think if you wanted to pair Sabonis with one of those guards, I'd rather have just chosen to put Sabonis along with Halliburton in Sacramento, and I think it would have worked better. Now, am I saying Fox is trash? No, but I just don't really get the fit a lot unless Fox starts knocking down those threes at a higher clip or Sabonis starts knocking down the threes at a higher clip. But when it comes to contract situations, Sabonis does got about two and a half years guaranteed left in a Kings jersey, half of this season and then two, I think, full seasons after this. And then for the Halliburton aspect, they do got about the rookie contract, the remainder of his rookie deal, and then they got the contract extension they can offer him. So I expect Tyrese Halliburton to be in a Pacers uniform for a very long time. And I think this is the first move of many for a now rebuilding Pacers team. So I'm going to give the Pacers the W on this, and I'm going to give the Kings the L. But I'm not going to say the Kings L is as big as I thought it was going to be when I when the trade first went down and I saw what happened. I'm not going to say it yet. I'm going to give them the L, but it's going to be a slight L for now. For now. Let us now discuss the big trade rumor that went or been flying around for days now, weeks. And it's something that I said last season should have happened before, you know, Harden was even on the Brooklyn Nets. And that is the James Harden for Ben Simmons potential trade that could be coming in the next couple days. Sending James Harden reunited with Daryl Morey in Philly. And then you give in the Nets Ben Simmons, who hasn't played a game this season, but we all know he's made like three all-star games. He's still young. And right now, it seems like Brooklyn wants a little bit more, considering the flaws in Ben Simmons' game and what happened in the playoffs. I think they want a little bit of more. And I've heard Tyrese Maxey's name pop up quickly. I mean, Philly quickly denied that, though. And I've also heard Seth Curry's name as a guy that they could potentially end up being in a package if it happens. I think from a basketball standpoint, it makes the Sixers with Embiid and Harden an automatic title contender. Whereas with the current roster they got right now, I think they're more of a second round exit team. Harden and Embiid would automatically be one of the league's best duos. No debate about that. Embiid's in his prime. That would give the Sixers their best chance at a title since probably that 2019 playoff run when they had Butler, Harris, Simmons, and Embiid all on the same team. Now, in the Nets' perspective, I look at Simmons, and don't get me wrong, he's not trash, but let's just say for this season, if Kyrie ends up being a part-time player even throughout the playoffs, can you rely on Simmons to consistently help KD when he comes back? I don't know the answer to that. Now, for next season, if if this were to happen, if Kyrie's allowed to play full-time, then I really think that that big three would be actually pretty good. KD, Kyrie, and Ben Simmons could be a really good big three if Simmons kind of playing that Draymond Green role in Brooklyn and at times being the lead guy when KD or Kyrie are not on the floor. But nothing has happened yet between these two teams. And like I said, I would say the odds of this trade going down is probably at a 50-50 right now, whether it's at the deadline or in the coming, you know, in the coming days, or if it's in the offseason and a potential sign and trade. But one thing for sure is Brooklyn is not going to let Harden just walk out for nothing. I'm pretty sure it's it's not going to go down like that. A trade is going to happen, whether it's now or whether it's in the summertime. 
a trade is going to happen, whether it's a sign and trade or a trade deadline move. Because if he ends up leaving for nothing, then Brooklyn just got finessed. Look at Karis LeVert. Karis LeVert's in Cleveland with Jared Allen. You know Brooklyn feeling some type of way. Especially if they don't get no results of this whole James Harden big three with KD and Kyrie. So we'll see what happens in the next coming days. But the trade deadline's getting really good. You know, it always usually is, but this year, a lot more big names flying around. Who knows? Maybe Damian Lillard could end up being out, even though Portland out here talking about they want to build around Lillard and stop. Stop doing it. It's not working. Just rebuild. Y'all lost to Orlando tonight. Y'all lost to Orlando last night, whenever this video drops. Y'all lost. You're not going anywhere. Stop. But that's a different discussion for another day. If you want to hear me talk about Portland, go check out my last video. Anyways, that's going to do it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Link will be down in the description below. This has been The Checkup, where we talk hoops and hoops only. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.